When we speak over the nation and we say what God says, his seeds are going into the, the nation, into the atmosphere, into the soil, into the city, into the community, into the schoolyard, into the neighborhood. His word is a seed. And he said, if you'll just keep saying it and believing and calling it forth, you won't, you know, it, it's one, he, he can't always do it instantly because we're not dealing with, with an individual like I was that was in agreement with what he's saying. So when God's got a million zillion people out there that are rebelling against him and he, he won't just violate the free will and, and bless in spite of sin and all the stuff that goes on there, he's got to do a lot of work to change hearts and minds and cleanse and get, get a lot of power flowing to get 300 million people changed. But every time we do it, Something is being released when we're doing it at his, uh, when we're saying what he says, which is really where I want to go with this. Because there's a word in, in the New Testament that I, I feel like uh, just a lot, of, a lot of believers don't really fully understand this word. And it's a Greek word, homologia, homo, homologia, or homologeo, different form of it. Homo means same, or it can mean together. Logia, or logeo, comes from the root word lego, which, from which we get logos, and different forms of it, like logia. Lagos is one of the New Testament words for word, as in speak the word, or Jesus is the word, or the words that I say. Just, it, it, it's not even necessarily a spiritual word. It's just word for words. It's kind of hard to say, and it's like a redundant. It's the word for words. <laughs> So it means say the same words or say the words together with someone. Homo, together, or same. But this is the, this is the New Testament word for confession. We would understand it better, and we would probably... It would probably be far less confusing for people. And even one of the lexicons that I... I've studied this in, uh, said the same thing. It's almost unfortunate that some translations use the word confession. Because what it really means is to say the same thing. Yes. Or to say something together, to say words together. So whatever he said, I say them with him. We'd say it together. I, or I say the same thing he says. That's biblical confession. Homologia is actually the word in Greek for making a promise. Let me back up and let me, let me slow down. Because I want you leaving here tonight understanding what you are doing when you say what he says. So there are different words in the Greek New Testament for word. Most of you know that. There's, there, there's a word for written words. That's graphe. Most of the time, if you see the word scripture in your Bible, the word scriptures is graphe because it's written down words. Then there's rhema. A lot of people have heard the word rhema. Some people think it, a rhema word is a, is a revelation God gives you, but that's not what it means at all. Technically, in Greek, rhema is just a spoken word. Not like a spoken prophecy, a spoken word. The words coming out of my mouth right now in Greek would be called rhemas because I'm not reading them or they're not written. I'm saying them. Rhemas. So you got written words, graphe, you got spoken words, rhema, then you have logos, which is also speaking words, but logos takes it farther 
Logos is a diff- completely different meaning. Logos is the word spoken, including the message they are conveying. It's the reasoning in the words. It's the message of the words. We get the English word logic, logos, logic, logia, logic, because logic is what you believe. It's what makes sense up there. The word comes from lego, which means to ar- arrange or connect. One of the Hebrew words for word also, dabar, means to arrange. They took the word for words, lagos, the message in words, they took that from lego, arrange and connect, because when you, when I, when you talk to somebody, you're arranging words and connecting them to communicate a message. So the words coming out of my mouth right now are ramas, and the words in this book are graphes, but the message I'm weaving together as I put words together and speak them to you, that's logos, okay? So now that's why Jesus is called the logos of God, the word of God. He's never called the graphe of God. He gave us the graphe. He's found there, but no, he's not called the graphe, and he's not called the rhema. Why? Because he's more than just words on paper. He's more than just words. He's the message. He is the reasoning, the logic of God given to us again. We lost our understanding of who God was. And he said, Jesus, not only to redeem us, but to show us what God looks like. So he's more than the messenger. He's the message. And that's just not cute language to make you excited. That's what it really means. It goes on in that same chapter of 1 John to say, no man, after it says he is the word, it says no man has ever seen the Father, but Jesus explained him. Well, that that word explained him is exegete, exegeomai. He exegeted God for us. What do you, when you exegete something, a scripture, for example, what do you do? You don't just look up a word. You take that verse apart word by word by word. You look at every comma. You look at every form of it. You, if you're going to really exe, exegete something, you've got to pull out all of it and say, here, this is what it means. Well, Jesus exegeted God for us. He is the message. He's the logos. Well, now sometimes if you don't, if you don't, if you read into your New Testament and you see the word word, 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 you know, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, word, word. If you don't know which one of these words is used, you're really not able to fully understand what God is saying. Because sometimes he's telling us to say it, speak words, speak rhemas. But sometimes it's logos because he's, he's wanting us to know that it's not enough to just say words. Don't miss this. You've got to get beyond just parroting words. Well, I tried that stuff. That didn't work for me. It's because... When you thought you were confessing to release your faith, you weren't homologosing or homologia. You were homoramaing. Or you were homographing. You're taking words and just... God said... You're like a parrot, you know. But God says... It's not that that I'm saying you shouldn't speak the word. I'm saying he's trying to tell us You've got to spend enough time with it and feed on and meditate in it and listen to me to where you really understand what I'm saying to you. Actually, one of the lexicons that said it's the word logos, it's a word for a promise, homologia, saying the same thing, a word for making a promise, because they gave three different, they broke it down three, three, three different pieces. Said that the word means to assent to something, 
Well, what's assent? If you get assent to it, that means, okay, I agree with that. Then it means consent. What does that mean? Well, not only do I agree, but I agree for me. I bring myself under that. I claim, I, I embrace that. I accept that. And then you say it. That's what you do when you make a promise. Somebody says something to you, and you, they ask you for a promise. You're saying, yeah, I understand what you're saying, and I agree to do it. And then you say it, I promise. Hamalogia. So he says, that's the way you're born again. You heard my word. Finally, it penetrated that veil, made it to the heart, faith was born in you, and you believed it here, and you did what Jesus does. You released your faith out of your mouth. And when you said what I said, and, and you said it in agreement with me, and you said it submitting your life to me, you were saying, I see that, it's for me, and I accept it. And when you did that, something happened, and you were born again. And this is why the book of Hebrews says you've got to hold fast to that. 